<clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Hal Lopez and I'm going to talk about this work with Ignaz Sal about the relaxation for the direct disjoint pass problem. I will begin with a very brief introduction to parameterized complexity. Consider, for instance, a problem P associated with a parameter K. We say that P is in XP if P can be solved in a, in a time that looks like this. For example, <clears throat> an algorithm that solves P in time n to the power of 2k is said to be an XP algorithm for P. This is polynomial time for fixed k. And we say that P is in FPT if P can be solved in a time that looks like this. For example, an algorithm that solves P in this time is an FPT algorithm for P. And we remark that in this case, the polynomial exponent of n is independent of k. Uh, a problem P being W1 hard, a parameterized problem P being W1 hard, is a strong evidence that P is not in FPT. And the canonical W1 hard problem is the K-click problem. A kernelization algorithm that for a problem P with input I graph G and a parameter K is an algorithm that receives as input an instance GK of P and outputs in polynomial time an instance G prime K prime of P such that the new instances, the size of G prime K prime is bounded by a function dependent of K only. And G prime K prime is equivalent to G K. So both instances are equivalent. And we also say that if this function F is polynomial, then this is a polynomial kernel for P. And the classical result states that the parameterized problem P has a kernel if, he, if and only if P is FPT. So now about routing problems in digraphs. So here, when I say, when every time that I talk about an input like this, I'm actually including uh, digraph D as an input, as part of the input. So in a routing problem, usually we receive as input a set of requests I, S1, T1, S2, T3, and S K, T K. And the goal is to output a collection of paths P, P1, P1, P2, and 2 P K, satisfying I under some restriction. By satisfying I, I say I want to say that the collection P1, P2, P3, P K is like this. Each PI in the collection is a path from SI to TI in D. So for example, if we ask for all the paths to be pairwise vertex disjoint, then this is exactly the classical k direct disjoint path problem, which is a notoriously hard problem in digraphs. We can also ask for every vertex to be in at most c paths of the solution. In this case, we are dealing with the direct disjoint path with conjunction problem. In the figure, we have a solution for the direct disjoint path with congestion C equals two. Fortune, Hopcroft, and Willy show that the K direct disjoint path problem is NP complete for K equals two. And there it is XP index. Zlifkin showed that this problem is W1 hard index. And Johnson, Holmberg, and Simmer, and Thomas showed that this problem is XP in, bound, in digraph of bounded directed tree width. For the congested version, an extension of Zlifkin's reduction can be used to show that the problem is W1 hard index. And uh, easy reduction to the disjoint case is sufficient to show that the problem is XP index and XP in, in digraph of bounded directed tree width. It's also worth mentioning that the disjoint case also holds for add disjoint disjointness. And the congested version, this results for congested version also holds for edge congestion. But both problems are, are rarely W1 hard, even in DAGs. Moran Polsky results. Sigan, Marx, and Pilipskuk and Pilipskuk show that the direct disjoint path is FPT with parameter K in planar digraphs. Edward Muzi and Volan show that the congested version next being highly strongly connected digraph when the congestion is equal to two. And finally, Amihi, Krauser, and Max and Habinovich show that the congested version is XP indexed with parameter D 
In this case, D is the dual parameter of the normal congestion. D is equal to K minus C, where K is the number of requests and C is the allowed congestion. So this is a summary of the positive results here. C is the congestion for the congestion version and D is the distance between the number of requests and the allowed congestion. So in all, those, all of those positive results consider a restriction on the input digraph. We can ask what about results, positive results for general digraphs? Are there any positive results for general digraphs? Well, there is one for an asymmetric version introduced by Kaura, Bayashi, and Browser. In this version, the goal is to find a positive answer for the directly disjoint path with congestion or a negative answer for the fully disjoint version. This version was shown to be solvable in polynomial time when the congestion is equal to 2, 3 by Kaura, Bayashi, and Browser using the direct trig theorem. And in our work, we, bring, we also bring some positive news for general digraphs. We introduce a new relaxation for the direct disjoint path problem that considers a global congestion metric on top of a local congestion metric. So in the disjoint enough path problem, the idea is to find a collection of paths that is, that is disjoint to well behave only in a large part of part of the graph instead of asking it to be disjoint to well behave in the whole graph. So as before, we receive a, as input a set of requests, S1, T1, to SKTK, together with two integers, D and S. And the goal is to find a collection of paths, P1 to PK satisfying I, such that at least D versions of the digraph are occurring at most half paths of the collection. So at least the vertices of the digraph are occurring in at least S path of the collection. So D is like a global congestion metric and S is a local congestion metric that we want, we want to control only inside a set of D vertices. For example, consider this set of paths and requests. So since the paths from S2 to T2, S2 to T3, and S4 to T4 are in the searching right here in the middle, this is a negative instance for the direct, for the direct design pass problem with congestion two. However, if the number of matches in the intersection is small, like maybe five, this can be a positive instance for the design to not pass problem. For example, if D is at most N minus five and S is at least one. So again, the idea is that the paths are well behaved in a set of at least D vertices. The example on the left represents a solution for an instance with S equals to three. And it's not hard to see that the disjoint and not path problem generalize both the direct disjoint path problem and the direct disjoint path problem with congestion. If D is equal to N and S is equal to one, then we are asking for the path to be disjoint in the whole graph in every vertex that is in V of D. And this is exactly the direct joint path problem. And if D is equal to N and S is at least two, then we are asking that every, every vertex in the digraph occurs in at most S path of the collection. This is exactly the direct joint path with congestion. If, we ask, if S is equal to zero, then we are actually searching for a set of D vertex which we can delete while preserving the connectivity of every, of every request in the collection. This is exactly the standard network problem. So as a summary for the results that we proved, uh, we showed that the design to not pass problem is NP complete for K at least three, fix K at least three, both choices of T whenever S is fixed and at least one. We also show that the problem is W1 hot index with parameter K for the same choices of D and S. We also show that the problem is W1 hot index with parameter D for every fi fixed S, non-negative fixed S. And on the positive side, and we remark that those results are for general digress, we show that the disjoint and off-pass problem is exact XP with parameters K and the direct trig width of the input digress and that it is XP with parameters D and S, and that this is 
and that it is FPT with parameters K, D, and S. And this last result, we show this by showing that there is a granulization algorithm for the problem. To recall, an instance of our problem represented by five things. D, the input paragraph. E, the set of requests. K, the size, the number of requests. Small d, which is the global congestion metric, and s, which is the local congestion metric. And the goal is to find a collection of paths i such that at least d vertices of, of, of the graph occur in at most s paths of the collection. And to simplify the presentation, we are going to make some considerations to avoid some technicalities. First, we're going to assume from now on that s is equal to 1. And we're going to assume that all terminal vertices are distinct. All the terminal vertices are the vertices SI and the vertices DI. And we're going to assume that the, every vertex SI has n degree zero, 0 and every vertex TI has out degree 0. The first thing we're going to, I'm going to talk about is, about is about the construction that we use to show that the, our problem is NP complete for fixed K equals 3, at least 3. We do a reduction from the two directly designed paths problem. Here, we, if we write that C is equal to N minus D, then we can rephrase and say that we want to find a solution, a collection of paths, such that at most C vertices of the digraph are occurring in more than two paths of the solution. So in the two directly disjoint paths problem, the object, the goal is to find a pairwise disjoint paths from S1 to T1 and from S2 to T2. So what do we do? We just add to the guy graph a new vertex T2 prime and together with a path from T2 to T2 prime containing exactly C vertices. Then we add a new vertex S3, a new vertex T3, an edge from S3 to the first vertex of the digraph of the new path, and an R and an edge from the last vertex, vertex of this path to T3. Then we construct <coughs> our disjoint, our instance for the disjoint enough path problem, considering this whole graph together with the new vertices, and we set the requests to be S1 to T1, S2 to T2 prime, and S3 to T3. So, since the only way to reach T3 from S3 is through this path, and the only way to reach S2 to reach T2 prime from S2 is going to T2 and then using this path, any solution for the disjoint enough path problem will have C congested vertices, vertices in this path. And this means that the path from S1 to T1 and the path from S2 to T2 inside the, the, the left part has to, they have to be disjoint, fully disjoint. In this construction, we only added one new request to the instance. And since the two directly disjoint path problem is NP complete, this implies that the disjoint enough path problem is <clears throat> NP complete for fixed K at least three. Now for an overview of our canalization algorithm. So remember that an instance is denoted by D, I, K, and D. And here I am not showing the yes equals one. It's unhidden. And uh, uh, when related to an instance like this, uh, we say that a vertex V is congested. It's V blocks at least two requests of the instance. If that is, if, if there are two requests such that when I delete V from the digraph T, there are no paths from SI to TI and no paths from SJ to TJ. So <clears throat> when I talk like this, I can say that my goal now is to find a collection of paths satisfying this, this set of requests I. And I set X of size at least D such that every vertex in X is not congested. 
of kernelization algorithm, of the, the proof of our kernelization algorithm, they, it follows four steps. The first step is to compute a clean instance from the original instance. And here, a clean instance, by a clean instance, I mean an instance that is free of congested vertices. The second step is to take a, a clean instance with K requests and reduce it to another clean instance with K minus one requests. This is an iteration that we are going to repeat in our algorithm. What we do, what we want to do here is to find a path satisfying one of the requests such that this path is avoiding a large path of the a large part of the graph. On step three, we show that if we have a clean instance with k equals two that is sufficiently large, then it is uh, this instance is positive, and we can solve it in polynomial time. And then step step four is to use steps two and three to solve clean instances. That have the the number a number of vertices, which is at least a function depending only of k and d. So that's good. Generating a clean instance, producing a clean instance is actually the easy part. Bypassing the vertex v, what we do is that we delete v from the digraph and add all arcs from the in neighborhood of v to the out neighborhood of v. And by bypassing a set X of vertices, we mean bypassing all vertices in X. This is denoted by this, this notation. So bypassing a vertex cannot generate a new congested vertices. We show this. And it is known that it does not matter in which order you bypass the vertices. You will, you will always end with the same result. And we also show that a solution for an instance in which we bypass the set of vertex X implies the existence of a solution for the original instance. The st step one is the easiest step. We just bypass all congested vertices to generate a clean instance. Okay. So now, how, how do we reduce a clean instance with k requests to a clean instance with k minus one requests? What we do is the following. We define the set bi for each i, we, design, we find the set bi as the set of vertices v such that the request si ti is blocked by v. The same property holds for every individual vertex that is in bi. If we delete it from the graph, we disconnect ti from si. So the idea here is to show that at least one of those sets must be small. Assume that every set bi has size at least n over k plus one. Then if we assume this, uh, we have a contradiction because at least one vertex v will, will be in the intersection of two sets, bi and bj, which means that v is a congested vertex, which is a contradiction with our assumption that the instance is clean. So now assume that there is a bi that has a size at most n over k like this. In this case, we bypass every vertex there is in BI to generate a new bar graph in which there are two internally disjoint paths from SI to TI. From those two internally disjoint paths, choose PI to be the shortest one. By the size of the set PI, and by our choice that PI is the shortest path, we have that the size of the graph resulting from bypassing PI and all vertices from the path pi is at least this a clean instance. We show that there is a path pi from si to ti for some request i that avoid that is avoiding a large part of the graph. For the limit three, which is our base, uh, we don't actually prove it here, but it is like this. We show that uh, for any, every instance with two requests that has size at least 4D is positive, and then we can find the solution in polynomial time. We want to iterate step two. At each time that we do it in step two, we find a path, uh, we find a path linking from SI to some TI that avoids a large part of the graph, and we, 
bypass every one of these paths together with the set pi. We do this until k equals two. Until there are only two requests remaining. Now we look at the, this instance in which only two requests are remaining. If this instance is large enough, we solve it by step three. Because we know that it's positive, we know that we can find the solution in polynomial time. So we consider step two, we consider step three, then we do some math, and then we can show that if a clean instance has at least this amount of vertices, we show that it's positive and that we can find a solution in polynomial time. Granulization algorithm is actually very, very simple. We just take an instance and we bypass every congested vertices, vertex to generate a clean instance. And then we, we look at this instance just at the size. If the size is large enough, we use step two, then step two and step three to solve it. So when we consider uh, all the possible choices for S and all the technicalities that we avoided here, the real kernel size is like this. And we leave as an open question whether this problem admits a polynomial kernel. And we show that a negative answer for S equals to zero is sufficient to show that a negative answer for the general case. And we also remark again that our result, it implies a, re, a positive result for the standard network. It implies a, kernel, a kernelization algorithm for the standard network problem with parameters k and d, where d is the dual of c. Now, d is n minus c, and c is the size of the solution that we want in this standard network problem. And this last slide is just a, a summary of everything that I said and then all the results that we, we got. Definition of the disjoint and off-path problems, the, the choices of parameters and what those choices represent, and the summary of the results that we got we got in this work, and the open questions and concluding remarks. This is it. Thank you for your attention.